quick revision video on enthalpy of solution. So we'll start by looking at the enthalpy changes involved and then we'll go into the cycles that we use to calculate the enthalpy change. So the first one we've got is the enthalpy change of hydration. So that's when one mole of gaseous ions completely dissolves in water. The examples I'm using for this slide are based around sodium chloride. So the equations for that process are Na plus gaseous going to Na plus aqueous or Cl minus gaseous going to Cl minus aqueous. The lattice enthalpy, so that's one mole of an ionic compound formed from gaseous ions. So again using sodium chloride as the example, that's Na plus gaseous plus Cl minus gaseous going to NaCl solid. And then finally, the enthalpy change of solution. That's the enthalpy change when one mole of a substance is completely dissolved in water. So for sodium chloride, it will be NaCl solid going to the aqueous, the separate aqueous ions. So before we get into the cycles, we'll just talk about the whether it's exothermic or endothermic for these processes. So enthalpy change of hydration is always exothermic. And that's represented by a downwards arrow on the Born Harbor cycles. So it's exothermic, it releases energy because you've got um, attractions between the dipoles on the water molecule and the charges on the ions. Lattice enthalpy is again always exothermic, and that's because you're forming ionic bonds and that's going to release energy. And again, that's represented by a downwards arrow on the cycle. Enthalpy change of solution, well that can be either exothermic or endothermic. And endothermic processes have an upwards arrow on these cycles. So we'll move on to the cycles now. I'm going to look at the exothermic one first on the left hand side and then endothermic on the right hand side. So we'll start with the highest energy particles and they're going to be the gaseous ions. We're going to bring them together and form one mole of the solid so that enthalpy change there is the lattice enthalpy. So because this is an exothermic cycle, when I dissolve the AB solid in water and form the aqueous ions, it's going to release energy and so they appear below the line for the AB solid. So exothermic process, enthalpy change of solution. And then running down the other side, what we need to do is essentially turn those two gaseous ions into aqueous ions and complete the cycle. So we do that one at a time. So you can see there I've changed the A plus gaseous into A plus aqueous. So that's the hydration enthalpy for A. Remember this is an exothermic process. And then finally B minus gaseous to B minus aqueous. That's the enthalpy change of hydration of B. So you can see we now have that completed cycle. So we'll quickly run through the endothermic cycle. This time I'm using X, Y as my example. So again, the gaseous ions are going to be the highest in energy. Bring them together to form one mole of the ionic solid. So that's the lattice enthalpy. This time though, it's endothermic enthalpy change of solution. So the aqueous ions need to come up and the arrow connecting the solid to the aqueous ions is pointing upwards for the endothermic enthalpy change of solution. And then finally, just to complete the cycle, we just need to do the two hydration enthalpies for the gaseous ions, one at a time. So you can see I've gone from X plus gaseous to X plus aqueous. So that's the enthalpy change of hydration of X. And there's the one for Y. So we use Hess's law to do the calculations. So looking at the left hand one, we've got two roots. Quite easy to see the two roots on this one. So the lattice enthalpy and the enthalpy change of solution is one way of going from gaseous ions to aqueous ions. And down the right hand side, we've got the sum of the two hydration enthalpies. So looking at the endothermic one now, we've still got the same two roots because we've got the lattice enthalpy plus the enthalpy change of solution is getting us from gaseous ions to aqueous ions. And down the other side, we've got those two hydration enthalpies. So if you were calculating enthalpy change of solution, it doesn't matter whether it's an exothermic or an endothermic cycle. The maths is the same. Enthalpy change of solution is equal to the sum of the hydration enthalpies minus the lattice enthalpy. 
So we just need to consider now what's going to make an enthalpy change of solution exothermic or endothermic. So basically, if the sum of the enthalpies of hydration are greater than the lattice enthalpy, which is what you've got on the left-hand side there, so essentially this level here is longer than this one here, then to complete the cycle, this has to keep coming down. So that's going to give you an exothermic enthalpy change of solution. And on this one here, if the lattice enthalpy is greater than the sum of the hydration enthalpies, then you're going to get an endothermic enthalpy change of solution. So we'll just finish with the two factors that affect the lattice enthalpy and the enthalpy change of hydration. It's ionic radius and ionic charge. So we'll start with ionic radius. The smaller the ionic radius, the greater the attraction between the ions, if we're talking about lattice enthalpy, or if we're talking about hydration between the water molecules and the ions. So you're going to get a more exothermic lattice enthalpy or hydration enthalpy. Ionic charge. If you've got a greater ionic charge, again, you're going to have greater attraction between the ions themselves, if it's a lattice enthalpy, or hydration enthalpy between the water molecules and the ions. So again, more exothermic, the lattice and hydration enthalpy.